The first deadline in the effort to kick Donald Sterling out of the NBA comes up tomorrow. That's when Sterling is supposed to respond to the NBA's charge that his conduct has damaged and continues to damage the league. It comes as his wife sits down with potential buyers over the sale of the team. On Sunday, Shelley Sterling reportedly met with the former Microsoft chairman Steve Ballmer. And according to ESPN, there are six serious bidders for this franchise. So let's talk about that. With me now, CNN commentator and senior writer for ESPN, LZ Granderson, and Brian Claypool, a criminal defense attorney and a Clippers season ticket holder. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Hi, Carol. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for being with me on this Memorial Day. Brian, we know Donald Sterling turned over the sale of the team to his wife. Does that mean she can sit down with Steve Ballmer and negotiate a sale? Happy Memorial Day, by the, by the way, Carol. How ironic that on Memorial Day, on a day where, where our, our veterans have fought for equality in our country and they fought for freedom in our country, they were talking about a man who wants nothing to do and a woman who really wants nothing to do with equality in our country. And getting back to your question, Shelley Sterling can talk to whoever she wants to try to negotiate a sale of the team, but at the end of the day, Carol, she's not going to have any interest in the Clippers because in 2005, she signed the same agreement that Donald Sterling signed that says that neither one of them can transfer their 50% ownership in the LA Clippers to each other unless the Board of Governors of the NBA approves that by a three-fourths vote. So she's not going to have a say in, in who, the, who the Clippers get sold well, to. Well, there's kind of a caveat to that. And Elsie, I'd, I'd like you to address this. Shelly Sterling wants to remain a minority owner. Donald will be completely out of it. The NBA commissioner might have complicated matters when he said in that initial news conference, quote, there have been no decisions about other members of the Sterling family. And I should say that this ruling applies specifically to Donald Sterling and Donald Sterling's conduct only. So, so what does that mean for Mrs. Sterling or Sterling's children? Well, that was made before the NBA really started to do its investigative work and put together what seems to be a really impressive case, not only against Donald Sterling, but also against Shirley, Shelley Sterling. The LA Times reported a couple of days ago that there were several employees of the Clippers who talked specifically about Shelley Sterling and her racist behavior around the organization and that that organization does not want her involved either. You also have had leaders like LeBron James, players in the league, saying they want no Sterling to be a part of the Clippers franchise. And so while it's, she may have a desire, either for tax reasons or just vanity reasons, to want to hold on to a portion of the team, the reality is she doesn't have the support in the league office, nor with the players to have make that happen. And Brian, I think LZ brings up an important point. I would think LeBron James at this point is the all powerful person here. He could lead a boycott if any Sterling family member has a stake in the Clippers. So that, that sort of settles how the NBA is going to fight this, doesn't it? Well, I think he makes a great point. And, and, and I think another angle, though, Carol, I think that the NBA is going to, to carry out here is they're going to also go after Shelley Sterling on this morality clause. There is evidence, there's, there's testimony under oath, Carol, years ago from prior tenants, from prior property managers that have implicated Shelley Sterling being a racist. And I think if the NBA was smart, what they do, what they should do is broaden the umbrella at this hearing and also include allegations against Shelley Sterling to prove that she is also racist so that they can capture this all in one hearing and stop her from having any ownership in the Clippers based on this same clause in Article 5 that she has also done things that have morally impugned the NBA. Okay, so LZ last... You know, the thing that's interesting... Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, the thing that's interesting about that is that I don't think the NBA wants to really air out that dirty laundry because ultimately the question then becomes, if you knew this about the Sterlings, why didn't you do something sooner? Why didn't you do something 10 years later or earlier, rather? There's video of her, you know, portraying uh, 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 someone in the government trying to identify the race of the people, the occupants of the of the rooms that they were renting or the apartments they were renting and the NBA had this information like 10 years ago so they don't want that dirty laundry out there because they got to figure out why they didn't do something sooner and if I can just say one more thing and that is thank you to our veterans and those who are serving uh, on this Memorial Day absolutely okay so uh, I'd like to wrap this up by kind of pondering who will eventually own the Clippers because I don't think it'll be the Sterlings I don't think it'll be any Sterling I don't think any 
<laughs> think that. So Shelly Sterling approaches um, Steve Ballmer, right, LZ? So is he out of the picture just because Shelly Sterling sat down with him, you think? Well, well, Ballmer was involved with a group trying to keep the Seattle Sonics at the time in Seattle. And so this is a man which the, the league knows. He was sitting next to Adam Silver a couple weeks ago uh, at a Clippers game. So this is someone the other owners have been familiar with and someone who's worth $20 billion, so he would be ideal. But there's also rumors about Grant Hill, uh, the longtime NBA player, uh, leading a group that's trying to uh, get the Clippers, and then of course there's Magic Johnson. So I don't think this is a done deal, but Ballmer is a known entity, a known person uh, with ownership ideas that the league has already vetted and, and know. Elsie Granderson, Brian Claypool, thanks so much. I'm back in a minute.